Okay, we are going to go ahead and get things going here. Uh, today we have a real treat. We have uh, Don Cipriano McCafferty joining us today. She is the Assistant Director of the Passport to Careers Program for the Washington Student Achievement Council. And I am going to go ahead and pass it off to Don to introduce herself. The floor is all yours, Don. Thank you all for joining us. Hi everyone, my name is Dawn Cipriano McCafferty and I serve as the Assistant Director for the Passport to Careers Program um, with the Washington Student Achievement Council. And it is my pleasure today, I'm gonna actually go ahead and get started with a screen share. Get this going. Just thinking here. Um, but it's my pleasure today to talk to you about something called grit and mindset. Um, and before I get started, I just wanted to share with you a little bit um, about my own um, experience with this. So several years ago when um, my son was, he's now 15, when he was like in the fifth grade, he had this amazing teacher. And, um, you know, I was seeing that the, this teacher was choosing to, to use different methodologies in his classroom that that really um, were very effective with my son's learning. So the same child also plays competitive basketball. And what that means is that we spend a lot of time in the car driving from place to place. And um, I had read this book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. And it was so compelling to me that I was trying to tell my husband and my son, I was like, you, you guys need to read this book. It's so interesting. And I think it totally could come into play in our, in our regular lives, at school, in, in, um, in your sports, at work, everything. I think it just really defines um, what could be really important. So they refused to read the book, no surprise there. So I uh, went and got the audio book because I was not gonna let them get away with not listening to it or not reading the book. So when we would travel for basketball, I would put it in and have them listen to this, this grit book by Angela Duckworth. And at the end of it, our, our family had a different language. We had a different kind of conversation about things that were difficult and, um, and overcoming hard things. Now, as I was explaining this to Parker's teacher, like I said, he had this amazing teacher at that time. I said, hey, you know, I read this book, grit, it's amazing. Have you ever heard of it? And he said, yes. I have, it's amazing. And I want you to learn all about growth mindset and fixed mindset. So um, he then gave me a bunch of resources. I of course dove into it, started reading that, that stuff. And you know, I have to say that I'm not an expert in the field, but this is something that I've learned a lot about. Um, I've been able to apply it in work, at home, uh, in my own personal life. And um, it's been transformational. So it's been really helpful for like my son in school. It's been helpful for me at work and, and, and everything. So it's changed the language in our home. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you before we go ahead and get started. Let me adjust this really quickly. Oops. All right. Most of what I'm gonna be talking about today is actually written on the slides. And um, the reason I did this is so that after we do this training, you can take an opportunity to pause and think about all of this information that I'm giving you. So I want you to be able to go back to this PowerPoint and, and you know, look at it, remember what we talked about today and use it as a refresher for um, how these concepts work. work. So great is basically an understanding of, you're, you're gonna learn about what it is and how you can evaluate your own personal grittiness and its role in the concept of growth mindset. And then I'm also gonna give you an overview of growth and fixed mindsets. Um, you'll be able to do a self-evaluation. Um, you'll learn about growth mindset self-talk. And then um, in the end, you can learn how to develop a growth mindset plan. But before we get started, I. I want to start with this little video um, and I want you to reflect on this. I want you to, to take a look at, you know, understand how you're feeling as you're watching this um, because you could be frustrated by it. You could be invigorated by this. You could be, you know, um, you could really enjoy it or just not 
you know, resist this kind of stuff. So, so take a minute, evaluate how you feel. Um, I'm gonna stop the screen share, go into a different screen. And we're gonna play this game here. As a wildfire rages through the grasslands, three lions and three wildebeest flee for their lives. To escape the inferno, they must cross over to the left bank of a crocodile-infested river. Fortunately, there happens to be a raft nearby. It can carry up to two animals at a time and needs at least one lion or wildebeest on board to row it across the river. There's just one problem. If the lions ever outnumber the wildebeest on either side of the river, even for a moment, their instincts will kick in and the results won't be pretty. That includes the animals in the boat when it's on a given side of the river. What's the fastest way for all six animals to get across without the lions stopping for dinner? If you feel stuck on a problem like this, try listing all the decisions you can make at each point and the consequences each choice leads to. For instance, there are five options for who goes across first. One wildebeest, one lion, two wildebeest, two lions, or one of each. If one animal goes alone, it'll just have to come straight back. And if two wildebeest cross first, the remaining one will immediately get eaten. So those options are all out. Sending two lions, or one of each animal, can actually both lead to solutions in the same number of moves. For the sake of time, we'll focus on the second one. One of each animal crosses. Now, if the wildebeest stays and the lion returns, there will be three lions on the right bank. Bad news for the two remaining wildebeest. So we need to have the lion stay on the left bank and the wildebeest go back to the right. Now we have the same five options, but with one lion already on the left bank. If two wildebeest go, the one that stays will get eaten. And if one of each animal goes, the wildebeest on the raft will be outnumbered as soon as it reaches the other side. So that's a dead end, which means that at the third crossing, only the two lions can go. One gets dropped off, leaving two lions on the left bank. The third lion takes the raft back to the right bank where the wildebeest are waiting. What now? Well, since we've got two lions waiting on the left bank, the only option is for two wildebeest to cross. Next, there's no sense in two wildebeest going back, since that just reverses the last step. And if two lions go back, they'll outnumber the wildebeest on the right bank. So one lion and one wildebeest take the raft back, leaving us with one of each animal on the left bank, and two of each on the right. Again, there's no point in sending the lion-wildebeest pair back, so the next trip should be either a pair of lions or a pair of wildebeest. If the lions go, they beat the wildebeest on the left, so they stay, and the two wildebeest cross instead. Now we're quite close, because the wildebeest are all where they need to be, with safety in numbers. All that's left is for that one lion to raft back and bring his fellow lions over one by one. That makes 11 trips total, the smallest number needed to get everyone across safely. The solution that involves sending both lions on the first step works similarly and also takes 11 crossings. The six animals escape unharmed from the fire just in time and begin their new lives across the river. Of course, now that the danger's passed, it remains to be seen how long their unlikely alliance will last. Okay, come back here. Oops, this is still playing. Hold on one second. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Thanks for being patient with that as I was working through it. Uh, okay. So this um, just gives you an overview of grit and mindset. So first of all, grit was researched by Angela Duckworth, and she's a professor of psychology at the University of Pennsylvania, and she was formerly a middle school math teacher, and that is important um, because that's how she first started thinking about, you know, aptitude versus versus um, achievement. So um, she her her main question is, does aptitude guarantee achievement? And then mindset was researched by Carol Dweck, and she's a professor of psychology at Stanford University. Um, and she just, her whole question was, why do some people wilt when they are unsuccessful while other people thrive? So this slide will show you just a little bit about grit and, and, and I'll actually explain quite a bit from Angela Duckworth's book. So um, grit is passion and perseverance for long-term goals. One way to think about grit is to consider what grit isn't. Grit is not talent, it is not luck, and grit isn't how intensely for the moment you want something. Instead, grit is about having what some researchers call an ultimate concern, a goal you care about so much that it organizes and gives meaning to almost everything you do. And grit is holding steadfast to that goal, even when you fall down, even when you mess up, even when progress toward that goal is halting or slow. Think about getting a college degree and how much time and energy um, all of those things take. Um, Talent and, talent and luck matter to success, but talent and luck are no guarantee of grit. And in the very long run, I think grit may matter at least as much, if not more. The concept of grit is often interconnected with the theory of growth mindset. Um, people should stop believing that there's a ceiling on their potential and instead view it as something that can be continually developed with learning and practice. We can believe that with enough deliberate practice and dedication to a task, we can make incredible strides. The idea that large amounts of deliberate practice and not natural ability leads to success, uh, leads to success as a valuable tool for developing a growth mindset. When we see how deliberate practice and a healthy dose of failure is almost always required to rise above to the rise to the top of any field, the idea of growth mindset can be better cemented as a viable strategy for success. It shows unequivocally um, that practice and effort, not genetics, lead to success. So my guess is now that now that we've been talking about grit, you're probably wondering about how gritty you are, um, or maybe you know certain people are coming to mind. You know that you know Aunt Jane is super gritty, and and Uncle Bob is not gritty at all. So um, what you can do is this link that I have here. Um, I added this here so that you can go on. And, um, and test your grittiness. It, it, there's a simple questionnaire that you can just fill out. It's a, it's a multiple choice questionnaire. You can go through it in a, just a couple minutes. Um, and it's, it's kind of fun to figure out where you land on the grit scale. So now I'm gonna be shifting into, into mindset. Um, according to Carol Dweck's theory, there are two different categories of mindset. The first is fixed mindset. And that's basically the belief that we are born with a fixed amount of intelligence and, and ability. It assumes that intelligence and other qualities and abilities and talents are fixed traits that cannot be significantly developed. Now with a growth mindset, um, the belief that with perseverance and patience and effort, people have limitless potential to learn and grow through neuroplasticity. And I'll be talking about neuroplasticity in a second. Um, I personally find this really uplifting. I feel like this is something that, you know, hearing that we have limitless ability is just amazing. Um, this also assumes that intelligence and other qualities, abilities, and talents can be developed with effort, learning, and dedication, which loops back to the grit component. So neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to adapt to changes in an individual's environment by forming new neural connections over time. Neuroplasticity explains how the human brain is able to adapt, master new skills, store memories and information, and even recover after traumatic brain injury.
So this slide right here just gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Um, one of the things I think about with like a fixed mindset is like the, the is perfection, you know, that goal for perfection and being terrified of making a mistake. Whereas the growth mindset is the practice makes perfect mindset. Um, and this, you know, this can help you have a clear understanding of the two different mindset theories and how they approach things like challenges, obstacles, effort, criticism, and the success of others. So specifically looking at challenges with a fixed mindset, um, challenges are avoided. Whereas with the growth mindset, challenges are embraced. Um, obstacles, um, a fixed mindset, a person that has a fixed mindset, they might give up in the face of, of obstacles. And then with a growth mindset, they show perseverance. Um, effort, in a fixed mindset, you know, having to put forth lots of effort is actually considered um, negative. Whereas um, with a growth mindset, doing hard work and putting in the effort helps you pave the path to achievement and success. Um, under the fixed mindset, criticism is, is, you know, negative feedback, regardless of how constructive it is, is ignored. Um, whereas with the growth mindset, it provides an opportunity for feedback and can help you learn more about the, the thing that you're trying to do. And then um, success of others is, another, is also another piece where um, in a fixed mindset, other people's success is considered like a challenge or a threat, and it makes the person feel more insecure. Whereas um, people with a growth mindset, it, they can look at you know, the successes other, success of others as an inspirational thing. Um, and it can help them learn as well. So where do you fall? Um, do you exhibit characteristics of a growth mindset or fixed mind, mindset, or are you somewhere in between? I can tell you my fixed mindset comes out when I say I am bad at math. Like I know I'm not good at math. It's something I have to work really hard at. Um, and so this is something I catch myself saying. And so I have to really work hard at shifting that mindset. Um, other things like, you know, um, I'm not athletic or I'm not very creative. Those are all pieces of a fixed mindset. Whereas with a growth mindset, um, you, you just look at something and say, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this math problem, but I think, you know, this is not working well for me. So I'm going to try shifting this and I'm going to go at it with a different strategy. I'm going to look into this, you know, with, um, with maybe YouTube help and try to see if I can figure out another way of doing this. Um, and th this quote, this challenge is exciting. I put this here about a year ago. Um, challenges can be exciting. I don't know anybody to actually say this challenge is exciting, but um, you know, just looking at something like, hey, you know, this could be really fun if we could figure this out together. This would be really, really cool. So that's more of a growth mindset. And then I like to also think about babies learning how to walk. Like when they, you know, babies are born, they're not born knowing how to walk or talk. They, they roll over first then they sit up, then they crawl, then they stand, and then they take a step, and then they take two steps, and next thing you know, they're running, um, talking, you know, they, they, they babble first, and then they mispronounce words, and then next thing you know, they're speaking full sentences, and talking back to you when you don't want them to, um, but this is, this is another opportunity for you to really apply the concept of growth mindset. Babies are the epitome of a growth mindset. Um, the other person that's the epitome of a growth mindset uh, is Michael Jordan. And I'm going to try to pull up another YouTube video because I love this commercial that he did years ago. Um, because again, like I said, this totally wraps up the idea of growth mindset. Let's see if I can grab this here for a second. Okay, so the video on this is not exactly the greatest, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and play this for you.
So you can see there where Michael Jordan is actually talking about his his struggles and how he's overcome and and you know he's become one of the greatest basketball players in the history of basketball. So um, I just love that that commercial that he did years ago. Um, so this normally when I do this this presentation, I would normally have a handout for you to do and I'd ask you to go through these questions or these statements and determine whether or not they were a growth mindset or a, or a fixed mindset. So what I'm gonna ask you to do today, if you can do it, um, is in the chat function. I'm gonna read the statement and, and in the chat function, enter either a D for growth or F for fixed. And let me know whether or not, so like this one, just for example, there are just some things I'll never be good at. Enter in a G for growth or a F for fixed. What do you think, what category do you think this falls into? Yeah, I see a lot of people entering F. It is actually a fixed mindset statement. So the second statement is when I make a mistake, I try to learn from it. Do you think that's a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? Yeah, you guys are nailing this. It's totally growth. Um, when others do better than me, I feel threatened. What do you think? Fixed mindset or growth? Yeah, you guys. You got this. Um, when I show others I'm smart or talented, I feel successful. What do you think about that one? When I show others I'm smart or talented, I feel successful. That's actually a fixed mindset statement. Yeah, that one's a little bit more challenging. Um, I feel inspired by the success of others. Is that fixed or growth? Definitely, you guys are awesome. Growth mindset. Um, I feel good when I can do something others cannot. This is kind of a tricky one. So do you think this is fixed mindset or growth mindset? Oh, you guys, yay, awesome. Definitely fixed mindset statement. Um, it's possible to change how intelligent you are. Fixed mindset or growth mindset? Yeah, it's a growth mindset. Remember the neuroplasticity, you can continue. You, you have limitless potential. Um, you shouldn't have to try to be smart. You either, you just, you just are or you aren't. Fixed mindset or growth mindset. Yep, definitely fixed mindset. You guys are nailing it, awesome. Um, I enjoy taking on a new challenge or task with which I am unfamiliar. unfamiliar. Yep, growth mindset. Oh, awesome. So do you exhibit characteristics of a growth or fixed mindset? You know, there's there's actually, it's really likely that you exhibit qualities of both um, mindsets. You could have a growth mindset in one area of your life. Like for me, it's writing and a fixed mindset in another area. And again, for me, it's math. Um, all people have both mindsets. It's just mo It's just more a matter of which mindset you're prone to defaulting in to with certain situations. Um, we must recognize and accept that we're both a mixture of the two mindsets, growth and fixed. And although it may become more intuitive with practice, we'll always have to be intentional, intentional about employing our own growth mindset. So this is where we talk about, oh, if I can get the slide to go. Here we go, self-talk. So our inner voices are constantly buzzing away in our brains and psychologists have discovered that what the voices are saying have an impact on your success or failure. With young children, you often hear them, um, hear their self-talk while they're playing. Eventually that speech turns into an inner, inner monologue or self-talk, working hard to organize our thoughts, regulate behavior and develop self-awareness. Self-talk is critical to managing mindsets. We can manage the mindset by developing an awareness of the fixed mindset voices and growth mindset voices in our head. Once you figure out which mindset is the which mindset the voice is coming from, you can work to reframe it. So think of a time when you were really frustrated or gave up on something. So for me, um, just example, last night I was working out with my son in the garage, and he comes in and he just throws a whole bunch of weights on this bar thing, and he wants me to lift them, and I can't lift it. He can lift it easily, but I can't lift it. And so I was like ready to give up. And he 
used his fixed or growth mindset language on me. And he was just like, no, you can do this. We're just going to start. We're going to take some weights off. And we're going to start all over again. So think about some, some times where that has happened to you, where, you know, you, you wanted to do something, but you were frustrated because you felt like you couldn't do it. And then what were the decisions that you made to help navigate that? Did you, did you quit or did you work around it and try to find a way to do it? Um, so yeah, think about it. What, what could you, how could you have responded to that fixed mindset voice with a vote with a growth mindset voice? So on the previous slide, I talked about self-talk. It's also really important to think about what, what you're saying to other people. So there's two types of praise. Um, there's person praise and process praise. So with this slide, I'm going to talk, talk about person praise. Now, naturally, like I catch myself doing this all the time. Like I say, gosh, you're so smart. You're such, you're such an, you know, whatever awesome at whatever it is. Um, you're such a natural at sh shooting free throws. Um, this defines the person. Now, um, if you think about it, 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 it's supposed to be helpful. It's, it's meant to be helpful. The person that's giving that feedback to the person is intending to be kind and helpful, but what it can actually do is hurt the person. You think about it. If you say you're so smart, when that person tries to do something and they fail at it, then they start to question themselves and they think, okay, well, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm not so smart. Maybe I'm stupid. Or maybe I'm not naturally talented. Maybe I, I can't shoot free throws at all. Um, so they move to a fixed mindset for self-preservation. So with process praise, um, it acknowledges effort strategies or actions that contributed to the task. So um, I look at this with, uh, I don't know, again, I, you know, I'll use my son as a, as a, as a um, reference point. Like you really, really worked hard at that. Look at, look at, you built that fire pit outside and I can't believe how much time and energy you spent working at building the perfect fire pit. This is amazing. I just used the perfect word. Don't, don't, don't do that. Um, look at how far you've come from, from never having done this before. You did the research on it and you, you know, you dug the pit and you put, Put the sand in there and you did all this stuff. So it really praises the work that they did, defines the process. That way the person doesn't experience as many insecurities um, and they, they're able to understand that uh, making mistakes is part of the learning process. Um, you know, yeah, okay, so you built that fire pit and it was a little oddly shaped, it wasn't a perfect circle. And so, you know, you had to take the, the bricks down and you rebuilt it and that, that took a lot of time and energy and I'm so proud of the way this turned out. You really did a great job. So this encourages continual improvement. So think about a time where maybe you received process praise or you gave process praise and how that was received. Um, it, it does, it's, it's more effective. It's a more effective way of telling somebody that they've done a great job or you know, that you see the work that they're putting into something. So how do you start shaping your language to ensure you're providing process-oriented feedback? Um, so I've developed these feedback stems um, to help you start your sentences when you're trying to give someone feedback. So I noticed how hard you worked to build, build that fire pit. I noticed how much time you spent outside practicing your free throws. Um, look how much progress you've made. You hit seven out of 10 free throws as opposed to three out of 10 last time I came outside to watch you. Um, so it's it's that kind of thing. And you can also use it in a different strategy. Um, if they're not making the progress that, you know, you, you see them getting frustrated, um, you can ask them, you know, could it make a difference if you maybe took a step in before you shot that free throw, you know, see if that, if you can work your way back to that free throw line, um, you know, those types of things, giving that kind of encouragement and feedback that can be really helpful um, to the person doing that. Um, so another example with this is, is, again, my son and my father. My father is the epitome of grit and growth mindset. And, you know, my son is an emerging learner with this grit and growth mindset. So um, my son didn't know how to ride a bike. My dad came to visit. And um, they both decided that Parker was going to learn to ride his bike. And so I left for work that day. And the two of them stayed outside all day long because they're both gritty. and um, 
by the time I came home, he was riding a bike. And so again, that was, it was awesome because I, I had the opportunity to say, wow, you spent so much time out here. You did so much work. You learned how to balance and you rode your bike. You can ride your bike around down the street now. That's amazing. Um, that was a, another, um, it was just a really fun opportunity to be able to provide that feedback to him and watch him grow in, in that way. So developing a growth mindset, um, how do you shift from having, from being in a growth mindset or a fixed mindset to being in a growth mindset? Um, shifting your thinking can actually be really easy if you're prepared. So think about what gets you into a fixed mindset, then confront it with the growth mindset self-talk. So um, with this piece, I'm going to talk about triggers. Um, for me, parallel parking. So I look at this examples of fixed mindset triggers that parallel parking could be a trigger for me. So when I lose my temper, you know, I pull into a restaurant parking parking lot and there's only one spot available and I have to parallel park in order to get there. So do I do I get mad or do I just say, okay, well, you know, let's let's try to make this work. Um, and then I pull up to the spot and I'm trying to parallel park and it's it's just not it's I'm, I really need to work on my parallel parking practice. So, um, you know, do I give up then, or do I find a new restaurant, go someplace else? Um, when I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure, you know, maybe there's cars behind me that are trying to get to the restaurant and I'm, I'm starting to get panicky. Um, what do I do? And then when I feel anxiety about how I'm performing, there's people in the restaurant that are watching me try to parallel park. You know, what am I going to do? Am I going to just keep doing this and, and, you know, risk looking like an idiot and failing? Um, or do I just say, forget it. You just practice until you get there. You won't hit any cars. They can wait. You know, you can, you can move through this. So this is this is just another example. So there are triggers that can get you that can get you set into a fixed mindset in find fixed mindset mode. So what you do is is equip yourself with the ability to talk your way out of that fixed mindset with growth mindset battle backs is what I'm going to call it today. So um, this, this slide here provides you with like ideas for helping you come up with a growth mindset plan. So if you really are stuck in a fixed mindset on, on a certain task or whatever it is, you can develop your growth mindset plan. And um, I also, you know, when I first started doing this, I did have to actually go through and I didn't write these things down or anything, but I would look at this and read it and then um, respond to each of these questions or each of these statements with like, how am I gonna work around this? How am I gonna battle that fixed mindset with a growth mindset? Um, and I also think that these plans are excuse busters. So um, it takes, it takes, this does take practice. Um, and it is a battle with what goes on in my own head as I work through a challenge. Um, confronting the fixed mindset barrier tells me that I can overcome, overcome them with um, the growth mindset pieces of it. So um, this slide just provides you with um, Carol, Dweck's, uh, Carol Dweck's information, Angela Duckworth's information. These are the books that I've used um, to help learn more about a fixed mindset and growth mindset and grit. Um, the Growth Mindset Coach is actually a book that's used by educators to help them in the classroom. Um, it, it's kind of like a project plan for every one one project plan for each month of the academic year so that they can work through these things. This is something that, um, you know, maybe is geared more toward younger students, but you can take the idea and concept and use it with your students um, on your on your campuses or um, with your clients as well. And that's it for my presentation. Are there any questions that I can help answer? Dawn, thank you so much. I don't know if you've seen, um earlier in the chat, but someone is wondering if you are willing to share the slides or the PowerPoint from this. Yeah, presentation. absolutely. No problem. Awesome. And we, um, we do have the question and answer function open, but folks, if you want to just unmute yourself, you're welcome to put any questions or thoughts into the chat as well. Um, that works. WPN website, yes, we will, um, we're recording this webinar, so we'll um, make any edits and we should have it posted by Friday. And you know, ultimately with this, um, 
I hope you find the courage. I hope you're able to find the courage to do this, get gritty and swing into this growth mindset world. Um, it, like I said, it really has been transformational for us. Um, and, and now even, even when I hire, looking at staff and, and opportunities to hire, it's something that I ask about is, is, you know, one of the things I look at is, does this person have a growth mindset? So, um, yeah, and think about how this mindset could impact the students that we work with and how, how that could positively help them. So, yeah, that's it on my part. We have if you have any questions, raised, even after the webinar, you can go ahead and contact me. No problem at all. Don, we have one raised hand from Juliet. Oh, okay. Juliet, do you want to unmute? Okay, maybe it was a mistake, but <laughs> so, oh no, she's trying to figure out how to unmute. Uh oh. Um, you should have audio function. Uh, while I look into that, let me see. Juliet, you might have to put your chat or your uh, comment into the chat. While we wait for that, you have another question down. Where do we find the auto, I think, audiobook? So when I got this, I didn't have um, Spotify or, or Audible or anything. So I actually bought CDs and I've since shared it with other people. Um, but you can definitely get find it on Audible. It would be there and you can just download it. Okay, everyone should be able to unmute at this point. Go ahead and give it a try, Juliet. I don't hear anyone, okay. Any other questions in the chat? Yeah, I clicked on the allow participants to unmute themselves option, but apparently not working out. Juliet, are you able to type your comment into the chat? Okay, well, I see some folks hopping off. Um, if there are no other questions, thank you so much, Don, for your time today. Such an enlightening topic. We appreciate um, you taking the time and sharing your knowledge and your passion for growth mindset. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll get the recording up um, on the Washington Passport Network website, and you all should be receiving a very brief survey immediately following this via email. If you could just take a few moments to fill that out, we would love to have your feedback um, for the planning purposes of future webinars. So thank you again, and we'll look forward to seeing you next month. In the month of May, we have a webinar coming from um, our previous speaker from our Passport Conference, uh, Jamerica, and she'll be talking about identity and foster care in honor of National Foster Care Month. So hope to see some of you all again in the next month. Take care, all.